Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to a Friday Night Live. Let me just get myself settled. Who have we got? Hannah, Sam, Jeanette, Angela. Hi, guys. Welcome. So, I'd set myself a goal of finishing that robin off before I swatched these. And because I've finished it, I've been able to have a little play. So tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about these Castle Art Gold pencils with a little bit of a review, a little bit of a test. Yeah, so I'll show you what we get. So this is the 120 set that comes in the zipped pencil case. Oh, thanks, Angela. <laughs> Hi, Jolie. Hi, Liz. Just waiting for people to drop in. Thanks, guys. So yeah, that was my motivation because these have been torturing me for a whole week since Castle sent them to me and I set myself a target. Finish the robin, then play with these pencils. So this is the 120 set in the zipped case. And when you buy them in the zipped case, you do get a lot of extras with them. So you get a really nice um, little guidance booklet, which I'm going to go through with you in a couple of minutes. And you also get some different sketch pads as well. So you get a white cartridge paper sketch pad. Little A5 sized one, so really nice for doing little tests on and things. Not a very heavy paper weight on that one, so you probably wouldn't be able to use a wet media on it. You also get a beige portrait paper sketch pad. Again, the paper weight's quite low on this one but really, really nice for doing different projects on a different colour tone of paper. You also get a Bristol board paper sketch pad. This one's very, very good. It's got very high paper weight to it, so I think we would be pretty good with wet and dry media on here. Again, A5, glue bound, so you can easily get your pages out. Nice and thick, that one. Hi, Sarah. And Angela as well, looking forward to this, good. Good, good. I know some of you that are watching are hoping that I'm going to say I don't like these pencils. I think you're going to be a bit disappointed. <laughs> so we also get a black paper sketch pad with it as well. Again, quite a low paper weight here, so mm, not too sure about wet media and things. But having said that, very nice for using those Pentel dual metallics on different colours, remember, on black paper. Angela's laughing. <laughs> Okie dokie. So give you a first little look at these pencils. In fact, let's just go through the rest of the paperwork first and then we can get on to the good stuff. Hi, Christia. Hi, Sally. So you do get this information leaflet with them. It's quite big. So I'm going to struggle to show you the whole thing. But what it does give you, if I can get it round the right way, way absolute whopper. So the design of the Castle Arts Gold Tin, you'll notice has got all of these different elements on it. And what they give you is tutorials with colours to use to try and recreate certain elements of what's on the tin. Again, this poster is bigger than A3, so I just can't get the whole thing underneath the camera physically. What it also gives you is quite a sensible colour order for the pencils which is something that the swatching chart is not which you will see in a few minutes. So I'm going to fold this over ready because I want to use this as an example to show you guys. So each of the bigger sets of pencils that comes with all the extras comes with one of these little guide books. Now there's some really 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 good stuff in here explains to you all about the um, makeup of the pencils, um, little tips about using them and things, you know, things that make you want to buy stuff. I mean, look at those drawers. <laughs> it's like, oh no. So tips on sharpening, storage, different ways to hold your pencil, blah, blah, blah. But the bit that I really like is this. So you get a really good section on colour theory with a colour wheel. So those of you that are struggling, Hi Laura, hi Val, welcome. <laughs> Sorry if I'm missing people. So you get a really good colour theory section in this booklet. So this is synonymous with all of the pencil ranges. So I have a pastel tint booklet, a watercolour booklet and now this one. They all have this in them. 
So if you struggle to pick colours and understand how colour theory works, this is a really, really good little booklet to keep out next to you while you're colouring. It's just the right size to put back in the pencil case so you don't have to keep ferreting around for it. And it will just help you to be able to see which kinds of colours work well together. So I think these are worth their weight in gold. Pun not intended, but you know what I mean. You also get little tips on light and form, so where you would put shadows on objects, distances of objects from light sources, that kind of thing, which is really, really helpful. And those of you that struggle with a lighter hand when you're colouring, you get this little pressure chart here. So you can practice with your pencil, let me just get the glare off that. You can practice here with your pencil so that you can achieve the lightest of marks. So when I say to you guys, I'm tickling the page, I'm kind of down here with pressure. This is really good. And you get other bits and bobs about different kinds of pencil strokes, mixing colors together, blending tips for this particular kind of pencil and different blending mediums that you can use. And then various little tutorials again at the back here which is a small version of what I couldn't show you on that massive, massive poster that comes with it. Fantastic. So, you also get a swatching chart. Now, these are the colours. So I've happily sat and swatched these yesterday and today. And this swatching chart, the one thing that doesn't make any sense to me at all is how this is laid out. Look at that blue sitting all the way over there when all the other blues are here in the middle. Now looking at the leaflet that you actually get with the pencils, they actually do then give you a swatch it which is in a better sort of colour family order here. So what I've decided to do is keep this handy so that I can see the colour relationships to one another. But I'm going to keep them in the pencil case in this order much as it's completely screwing with my head because I don't like things that are all over the place it's just for ease of finding them but yeah I agree with you Julie this blue bothers me tremendously as does this purple it yeah I, I don't understand quite why you would get such a fantastic swatching chart and have it make zero sense there may be some wonderful method behind this that I don't know about but that's the one thing that I find very, very peculiar. Look at that. So this is the range of colours. So let's have a little talk about the pencils themselves. So first thing that I noticed when I opened this pencil case was the smell. Now, in a good way, I think these smell pretty delicious. I'm going to hold it up to the camera so you can all take a sniff. Now, those of you that lean towards your phone, have a little laugh. <laughs> okay, so these gold pencils, really, really nice um, navy blue barrel, really clearly named and numbered for ease of reference with that crazy colour chart <laughs> and any other swatches that you might do. A bit more easily identifiable, I would say, than the classic pencils. I can see a lot of you laughing. They do smell really, really nice. I know some of you have been on with me when I've used my classics before and I've said that the smell is really quite funky. There's no funky smell with these at all. They smell really, really beautiful. So they all come, obviously, in this really nice pencil case if that's the set that you've gone for. Slightly random colour order, which we've already discussed. But really, really, really nice. So what I've spent some time doing today is having a bit of a test with them. So you love that you can read the letters. Yeah, so do I, because some of the other ones um, that I've got are quite hard to identify, whereas I find these really clearly labelled. I think if they'd have used silver on this, it would have been quite lost, whereas with the gold, really, really, really nice. Um, they feel nice to hold as well. Um, they mentioned this in the book about the barrel being nice and smooth and nice to hold. It really, really is um, nice to sharpen as well. I've had no experiences with this set of broken tips, um, pencils um, having sort of nibs that are shattering. I've had no breakage issues so far. 
they've arrived really, really securely, which I think is down to this really good secure pencil case that they've come in. So let's have a little go at colouring with them. So I'm going to scooch these bad boys out of the way and just bring in Magical Jungle. Now what I would say with these pencils that I've noticed this afternoon since I've been testing them is they do sit really nicely between a Polychromus and a Prisoner again. Let me just see what my colours were again. So I want Cobalt Turquoise. So as in old fashioned Blue Peter, this is one I prepared earlier. Right, Prussian Green. And Cadmium Green Pale. Which of course would be at the other end of the pencil case and not with the rest of the greens. Very bizarre. <laughs> don't understand this uh Angela says I'm not doing a very good job of putting you off buying them so before I start coloring them um with these I'm going to run you through the prices just to really kind of put the nail in the coffin for those of you that are um teetering on the edge of purchasing so those of you that have been following me for the last couple of weeks will know that I do have my own castle art discount code I'm going to put pop the link in the description below so this will be on YouTube later on and I'll put all the details on that video and on the post on Instagram as well. So at the moment, the um, gold pencils are on sale um, and the discount you're getting at the moment varies depending on what you're going for. This 120 zip set that I've got at the moment, normal retail price is £104.99. On sale with Castle at the moment direct, it's down to £70.99. And you can use my 30% code on top and bag these bad boys for £49.69. The tin of um, 120 set retails at £94.99. It's currently on sale for £60.99 and with my code you can get it for £42.69. The 72 zip set retails at £89.99. On sale it's 55 99 and with my code it is £39.19 and 72 tin retails at £79.99. It's on discount at £45.99 and with my code it's £32.19. So you're going to get a decent bargain with these if you buy them at the moment and you use my code. So let's do some colouring. So cadmium green pale I'm going in with first. Sam says she's not listening. <laughs> what can I say? Um, the thing with Castle, which I think is pretty good, is even if they're on sale, you can use other discount codes against them as well, which makes them an absolute bargain. I mean, this set I'm using, 105 quid, and you can get them for 50 quid with my discount. Do I have the price in American dollars? I didn't do that conversion, no. Um, but I think Google will help you out with that if you have a little look. <laughs> OK, so these work very similarly to Polychromos. They are an oil based pencil rather than wax and they layer up a little differently to how you would layer up with Prismacolor pencils, which is normally what you see me using. So I'm going to go in with the lighter colour first, which is this cadmium green pale as a base layer. First thing to say about these is they are silky, silky, buttery smooth. Which book is this from, says Julie? This is Magical Jungle. So silky smooth to use. I'm just going to stick my goggles on so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. They are quite crumbly, um, like a Prismacolor would be. You do get some dust and residue off them when you're using them. Um, but they do sit for me nicely in between a Polychromos and a Prismacolor pencil. Like I've said, you do have to blend these a little differently because they are an oil-based pencil and not wax. Plus side of that, you won't get the wax bloom that you get with something like Prismacolor. They are nicely pigmented as well, which I think you could probably see on that swatching chart that I was using. So with these being oil based, um, when I'm using my polychromos similar to these, I would always layer up with my lightest colour first and build the layers from the ground up. So you will see me blending these slightly differently to what you're used to seeing. 
So I'm going to do one of these little leaves. I'm going to finish a flower and then do some more of this tree as well. They do hold their point really nicely when you've sharpened them. And I've done um, the swatching with this one. I've also done this leaf with this one and I haven't had to resharpen it yet. Really, really nice. Nice even coverage, nicely pigmented. Smell good as well. Pretty much with my um, code as well as their discount at the moment, you're at a 62% discount on the retail price on this 120 set at the moment. So I'm going to go in now with a slightly darker green. So I've got this Prussian green. Again, all of them nicely consistent with clear writing, clear numbering, slightly random order in the pencil case, but we can get ourselves past that just about. Honestly, it's um, I've struggled to not tear them all out of the pencil case and put them right, but <laughs> I may do that yet, I don't know. So with these ones, I'm going to build up this slightly darker layer in the middle of this leaf. And then I will be using that other green just to blend everything back out again. So they do layer up um, two, three layers before the colours start to go muddy, which is a really nice feature as well. So if you have any questions for me, do fire away. I'm trying to keep an eye on my iPad. Very aware of probably giving you all the information at Intercity 125 speed, which I can only apologise for. It's my eagerness to tell you all about these lovely pencils. I am toying with the idea of doing a bit of a re review on the pastel tint ones as well. I don't know whether any of you would find that interesting or not. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little ghost of a line down the middle here. And then I can use that other green just to blend that out a little bit before I add the blue. There we go. So you can just see there that I've started to get a little bit of pencil residue over, which is um, similar to what you would get with Prismacolor and Polychromos as well. How do they compare to Derwent Pro Color? I don't know. I'm really sorry to say I don't actually have those. Julie has a question. Are you going to talk me out of buying these? Not a chance. No, <laughs> unfortunately not. Um, I think with these ones, um, the range of colours, they will sit really nicely with any others that you've got as well. Um, I will be interested to see how these blend in with the classics and the pastel tint colours, because obviously we're going from oil to wax based. But yeah, I think they're a pretty nice addition to um, to anybody's colour in supplies haul, really. And with the discounts at the moment that you've got both in Castle Art Zone sale and the code that they've given me to give to you guys, it's just it's just rude not to really, isn't it? So Christy is swatching pastel tints. Gail's received her pastel tints. Oh God, I'm so sorry. Everyone's asking me how they compare to uh, pencils I don't have. I'm so sorry, Halsey Colours. I don't have Pablo's. Sorry, guys. But yeah, this discount, those of you that are watching, um, mine, it works for people in the UK, USA and Germany. My contact at Castle has said to me that they are currently working on uh, going live in other countries because I know I've had a few uh, folk in Australia, New Zealand, Canada and other places in Europe who are looking for these products and um, they are working on it. So which do I prefer, gold or classics? Uh, I, like the bo I like both of them, Sam, which um, is probably not a lot of help, but I do feel that there is a place for both of them in anybody's sort of arsenal of stuff. I think these would work quite well with um, polychromos pencils. They're both oil based. It gives you a, a greater um, choice of colours really to use. What I have noticed across the classic range comparing them to these ones is that there are colours in this range that you have not got in the classics range. Quite a few colours actually and they're quite yummy. Um, so there seems to be there's a level of consistency with the colours across the ranges, but there are some subtle differences. What I do like about this set, and I'll show you the swatch again in a second, 
is the variety of tinted greys that you get. I think that's going to be really, really helpful. Let's have a look. Pablo's. Yeah, I think um, Pablo's are wax based rather than oil based. I just don't have any of them. I do believe my little brother's just popped on. Hey, Mitch. So, um, yeah, I think um, what I might do actually is go and grab the, the pastel tint and let's see how they sit with them as well in a second. But I think with the prices that you can get these at at the moment, um, especially with the sale, you'd kind of be daft not to give them a go, really. So there we go. So that's a three, three layered leaf, which is sitting quite nicely. I'm just going to correct a couple of bits that I can see that need correcting under here. It's just the glare from the, uh, the lamp and my reading glasses that's causing the problem at the moment. Coffee order tomorrow, definitely Mitch. <laughs> so my gorgeous little brother is on with us tonight and he has recently passed his driving test. So I'm hoping some of my lovely followers might wish him congratulations. Can I show the swatch chart for the classic and the gold ones? Yes, I can do that. Hang on, let me go grab it out of, from the cupboard on the other side of the room. Bear with me, you guys. Okay. So yeah, bless him. Passed his driving test first time. Absolutely fantastic. We're very, very proud of him. Right, let me find. So I haven't got the official Castle Art um, swatching table for the classics. Let me just unzoom. Ooh. Come on, please unzoom. Thank you. Whew. So these are the classics, which are in a proper family order, <laughs> unlike this other one. And then this is the gold. So we do have some similarities, but there are some differences as well. Don't know if, oh, there he is. I was just going to say, I don't know if Mitch has disappeared out of complete embarrassment, but he's still there. I can see him. <laughs> so some of the colours I've noticed that are different here, um, which I really, really like. This um, cherry is not available in here. And also you don't have all of these greys. So this is the classics in the grey colours. You have some other sort of tinted lighter colours like this almond. Some of these greys at the bottom that you don't have in the normal set. But yeah, that's the colour. So pigmentation wise they're quite similar I think really. Um, you can tell the difference between them being waxed and waxed and oil based. But yeah, this, this colour chart makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. <laughs> right, let me just get these out of the way. How much are the gold? I'll tell you how much the gold are. You probably will not be able to read my terrible writing. Let me fold this over. So this is based on um, today's prices. So the 120 zip set and tin, the 72 set zip and tin. This is the price, full price, full retail price here. This is how much they are online at the moment with Castle Art's own sale. And this is how much they are if you use my discount code on top of them. So I think I saw somebody say you can only use the code once, which is a bit unfortunate. But like Dominique's just saying, if you've got somebody else's email address, um, I would just crack on. It might even be worth setting up a new email address just so you can use it again, to be honest. I would probably do that myself. <laughs> but yeah, these are the prices at the moment. So these are correct as at today's date. Okay, let's carry on with the colouring. So I'm just going to try and zoom myself back in again. Never thought to add blue to green leaves. I'm always doing that. I'm always topping leaves off with other bits and bobs. It's, what can I say, it's a problem. So we're just going to have a look at this little flower, I think, next. Let me just remind myself what I was using. So, cherry. <laughs> Mel used your other half and he paid. That's fantastic. I think me and Catherine have probably done that before as well, actually, with her email address. <laughs> Right, Bengal Rose Deep and Pink Bloom. What's the code again? It is Suzanne30. Thank you, Dominique. Suzanne30 is the code. So 
I'm just trying to find, so I want pink bloom and Bengal rose deep. Really should have turned these the other way up so I could see where I was uh, putting these. Red oak vermilion. There it is. Honestly, the order that they're in in the pencil case, it just makes no sense to me at all. I may have to do something about this. My OCD is going crazy. So I'm using a pinky red mix here. So we've got some Bengal Rose Deep, some pink bloom. Now this is a colour that's not in the classics. Really, really nice soft pink to use and cherry which is another new colour that you don't get in the classic set so we're going to do a three colour blend on this flower so I'm just going to swizz it round upside down so I can get that better in shot for you guys so just remember um, this will be available on my YouTube channel later on so those of you that are obviously watching it sideways which is everybody at the moment you will be able to see this the right way round so I'm going to go in with that Bengal Rose Deep first. Still after the metallic watercolour Arteza. Oh, I they keep going out of stock with those. I think, I know a few of us have been using them on live and they've just been going out of stock really, really quickly, but it's such a good product. Those of you that are sort of wanting to get hold of those paints, if you go on their website, there is a facility for you to put your email address in to get stock notifications. So it might just be worth doing that and then you can grab them before they sell out. So I'm just going to put slightly different areas of this darker colour on, which I'll then blend out. So this page in um, Magical Jungle, once I've finished up with the ink tents page that I'm doing, I may well finish this one off with you guys using just these pencils. So those of you that are wobbling, if you treat yourself to these pencils, you may have a guided colour along coming up in the next couple of weeks with them. Sorry, Julie, I know that probably doesn't help. <laughs> but after you reverse enabled me to buy a watercolour book the other week, I think all bets are off. What's Laura saying? Had a set of those for Christmas. Yeah, they are lovely. Really, really lovely. I was lucky enough to be, um, they were on my Amazon wish list, and I was lucky enough one of my lovely followers sent them to me for Christmas. And I have to say, um, oh, they are just absolutely delicious. So right, I knew what, what you meant, Laura. I knew you didn't mean plants. <laughs> Yeah, the, these are, I think with them being on sale at the moment, it's a good time to, to grab these. They have said to me at Castle that the code that they've given me is going to be up indefinitely for the time being, and they'll let me know if that changes. So um, I would just say um, to you guys again, this is non-commission based and non-affiliated. So other than being sent these to test, I don't get any financial gain out of you guys ordering. They're just sharing it so that my lovely followers get a nice discount and I can use it as well I tried it the other day I thought I wonder if they've booby trapped it so I can't use it but they hadn't <laughs> so here we go Gillian says late are we meaning late to the live says, don't worry because this can be um replayed at any point so yeah so with these ones um like I was saying earlier, with them being an oil-based pencil, we would layer these up slightly differently, which is, again, what I'll show you with this flower. So I'm going in with my mid-tone first, just making some nice little random areas of, of colour there with some light bits. Again, you can probably just about see the little bits of residue that you get off these pencils. Nothing too problematic. This is just a makeup brush that I use to brush them away. So I'm putting my mid-tone down first and then then going to overblend with this light pink tone, which is pink bloom. So Gillian's late, let me know which pencils. We are talking tonight about Castle Arts Gold pencils. So these are the new artist grade pencils that Castle have recently bought out and we're doing a little review tonight. So I'm going to use this nice soft pink tone just to blend out this mid-tone colour. So I'm just blending in the direction of the pencil strokes. You're quite welcome, Gillian. The rest of this will be up on um, Instagram after we've finished and 
what a version the right way around will be on my YouTube channel later on as well. So very aware you guys are watching it sideways, but it's much easier for me to have my phone in landscape mode for my YouTubers. So just keeping the pencil strokes in exactly the same direction, softening over that mid-tone pink and covering over the rest of the white on these petals. Don't know why you're hesitating on buying a whole 120 set. So Josephine, 120 set. If you want all the pads and extra bits that come um, with the 120 set, at the moment you would get that for the bargain price of 49.69 instead of 104.99 with my code. If you go for the tin, you don't get the pads. You do get the swatching chart and you do get, um, I think you get the little booklet I showed you. And instead of 70, no, where are we? 89.99 with my code, you would get them for 39 pounds and 19 pence. So if you're hesitating, just look at the saving that you get. And if you grab them at the moment while they're on sale, because I think, yeah, there's a 32% discount off the 120 zip set and a 38, yeah, 38% discount on the 72 zip set. Maybe because you have a thousand other pencils. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm in your camp, Gillian. I actually didn't need any more pencils, but when they sent me these, I was like, welcome. Right, everybody, move up on the shelf. We need to find an inch to put these ones in. It's always a place in this house for more pencils, always. So just carrying on smoothing those colours out with that lightest tone pink. There we go, and just get rid of all of the residue. So then what I'm going to do is carry on darkening back over again with this Bengal Rose Deep. So this is the mid-tone colour that I used for the first layer. I'm on a no-buy with supplies for the year. Yeah, I think I was probably on the no-buy supplies for a year um, from, well, yeah, it's bad. It's, it's a problem. And all my lovely followers sent me so many things last month off my Amazon wish list for my birthday. I've literally got enough colouring books to um, colour until I'm like 95 and I still wouldn't have finished them. <laughs> so I've now got two shelves of books to choose from, which I'm obviously not complaining about, but yeah. So if you could purchase only one gold pastels or watercolour, which would I choose? Oh, Helen, what a question. Oh, God. The thing is... And this is not going to be any help to any of you that are deliberating, really. All of those products that Helen's just mentioned there are in the sale. So with the discount, they're a good price. Now, the watercolours, I have tried the Arteza watercolours. I much prefer Castle Arts. So I already had the 72 set and I did go and buy the 120 set for my birthday because with all the discounts, codes, all the rest of it, instead of 65 quid, I got them for 27, which I was pretty pretty happy with the pastel tint ones are a different kettle of fish altogether because what they do do is sit really really nicely with um, all of your other pencils so what you'll find in most of the ranges like prisma polychromos the other faber castell pencils derwent they don't have a massive supply of just pastel tint colors same with the classics same with these gold ones so what I've found with the pastel tint ones is they do sit really nicely across all of the other pencil ranges that I've got that I would use. So depending on whether you're somebody who likes wet media, um, like watercolour painting or whatever, or whether you're just a dry pencil per kind of person, would depend really on which one that you would go for, because I think they've all got their place if you're so inclined, really, and budget allowing. So my darkest colour here is this cherry and again this is a shade that's not in the classic set and all I'm going to do with this one now that we've got the three layers of these gold pencils down I'm just going to use this to add the darkest bit of detail in just in the middle and just to create any extra little lines that I want throughout the petal and that sits really nicely so this would be a fourth layer of these pencils and they're layering beautifully. Mel, are the pastels wax or oil? They're wax based. So what I can try and do is grab them and then we can see how they sit over 
oil based because you, you can mix um, wax and oil based pencils it's not a you know only use oil with oil or wax with wax you can mix them both I would be interested to see how they sit with these ones membership is free what membership are we talking about Dominique the castle club because, of course, if you join the Castle Arts Club, you do get to hear about their discounts and you get offers. And something else as well, if you make a purchase and you do a review, when you do a review, they then send you a discount code for 20%. So even if you can only use my 30% code once, that you would get a 20% one just for leaving a review on their website. And also, if you share um, a discount code with your friends, for every person that buys something, you get five quid back in a reward, which is part of the reason that I got those watercolour things at such a good price. So it's it, it all mounts up. Right, let me just grab uh, Count Cadmium Green. I want Almond. Uh, cadmium Green and Almond. So I'm just going to... Oh, my mum's late to the party. Where have you been? No doubt talking to that lovely fella of yours, I would imagine. So I've got my little brother, I don't know if he's still here, and my mum's here as well. Fab. Right. Uh, cherry. And coming green pale. Just reminding myself what colours I'm wanting for these leaves. Let's scoot you that one round. So I'll just show you these colours. So we have got the Cadmium Green Pale, which I already used earlier. You also get a slightly darker version, Cadmium Green. I'm going to reuse the Cherry. And then this is also one of the new shades that you don't get in the classics, this Almond colour, which is a really nice sort of beigey grey, um, which I'm going to use as a blend layer before I add this Cherry colour in. So again, with them being oil-based, we will blend these slightly differently. So I'm going to go in with my lightest green first. Let's see what Curly's saying. Uh, pencils contain both wax and oil. Ah, oh, I don't know, to be honest. Maybe. Maybe so. Okay, so with this cadmium green pale, I'm going to basically reuse one of these colours to tie the flower in with the leaf or the leaf in with the flower whichever way that you are looking at it so I'm just going to add a nice base layer of this down I'm going to pop a little bit under here as well I'm going to have a slightly different colour towards the edge there so I'm just going to leave plenty of white at the side there Let's do this one at the same time. So I'm not having to press very hard with these. I'm getting really nice coverage down on the paper. Really nicely pigmented. They do smell delicious as well. Which I feel is very important. Cherry would look nice in the leaf. It's in my hand, Dominique. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, take care, Angela. I'll see you Sunday, hopefully. So I'm going to go in with the cadmium green now, which is a couple of shades darker. I'm just going to take this down the centre line of the leaf. Gently integrate that into this lighter green. Again, we will blend out again with the lighter green colour on top. How do they compare to Prismacolor? They are nice and soft and smishy, actually. These are really buttery soft. I would say that they're softer to use than the classics are. So really, really nice. They are quite um, quite soft, quite crumbly. You don't have to put a lot of pressure onto them to get a really nice um, pigmented colour out of them. And I do love the fact that you have different coloured shades in here that you don't have in the classic set. Cherry's not in the 72 pack. Ah, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of cheeky little colours in uh, these gold pencils that you don't get in the other ones. And they are really, really nice colours. There we go. So I'm just going to blend back out again with the Cadmium Green Pale. 
just going to take that over the edge of the cadmium green layer take this all the way to the edge where I'm not introducing the other colours in just blend all of that out smooth everything over same with this one see I need to sit and do a bit of a comparison actually and mark on my charts which are the completely new colours that aren't in the classics just didn't have time to do that um kind of looks um like prisma colour yeah um they're not as pigmented as prisma but they're they're pretty close pretty close <laughs> super cheeky got my email set up for the metallic good luck <laughs> so this is another new colour which is um new to the gold range which is this almond colour, really, really nice kind of neutral blending layer colour, really. And what I'm going to do is introduce this at the very edge. And I'm going to overblend slightly into the green with it. And this just blends over the edge of the green and just protects it from going murky when I add this extra bit of colour over the top of it. So you could do this with um, a white if you wanted to as well. I'm just using a warm colour because the colour I'm going to be putting over it is quite warm as well. Let me see. Always pay with PayPal. Mm, me too. Gotta love a bit of PayPal. So again, another colour that is unique to the gold range is this cherry colour here. So I'm just going to get a slightly better point actually on this one this is quite a little detailed bit at the edge so this is just my dull 133 sharpener that I'm using so I go same back on with the cherry so this is the darkest color that I used in the center area of these petals and just to tie the leaves in where I've added that almond layer over I'm just going to really really gently smooth a bit of this over and this is a really nice way of just tying your leaves in with your flowers the color and product guide tells you what's in each set yes i think it does i just didn't look um i was kind of rushing a bit because i was doing a bit on my chameleon and i wanted to get these color palettes ready for tonight and um, i just didn't get a chance to do like a compare and contrast which i really want to do Again, nice and crumbly, so just keep moving those bits out of the way. Very, very, very similar to um, how the Prisma colours are. I'm just going to add some little veins in the leaf as well. Let's swizzle that round. So same on this one. So you can see where I've sharpened it, the very, very soft. I've already got a, like a flat edge on that tip of that pencil and I'm barely pressing with it really. Really, really nice coverage. So let's just pull some like veins back. So they are nice and soft like Prisma Colour Ice. You'll, those of you that watch me colour a lot will know that um, I do sort of rotate my pencil a lot with Prisma to keep the sharp edge and stuff. So I'm having to do that with this as well. Um, not because there's anything wrong with the pencils, it's just how soft and smushy they are. Really, really nice to colour with. There we go. So we'll carry on with these ones, but I'm going to do some more of this little tree trunk now. Chameleon looks amazing. Thanks. So let me just unzoom us very slightly while I do the tree. Okay. I might need to dig a few more bits out, so let me just see. Because they're all in daft places in this pencil case. Right, sap green. One second, guys. Sap green. Sepia. And walnut brown. Walnut brown, where have you gone? There you, there you are. Walnut brown, one second. Redwood. It would help if I'd put these back in the right places, wouldn't it? Oh, ha, ha, ha. There we go. Okay. Let me just get these other ones into my pencil pot. 
And then what I'll do is I'll show you these with um, some different blenders as well and, and then you can see how well they, they blend out. Oh, thanks, Dominique. Quite pleased with them. Quite pleased with them. So some slightly different greens. So I've got some sap green. This one is in the classic set. Walnut brown, which is also in the classic range. Sepia as well. Redwood, now this is another new colour, which is only in the Castle Arts Gold range. Really, really nice warm brown colour. And we're keeping this almond as the blend layer again. Helen really likes the idea of putting some of the flower colour into the leaves. I do that all the time, Helen. I do that all the time. It's a good trick of making your pictures nice and cohesive. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on... So you can see I've already done a little bit of a test here around this little guy earlier on. I'm just going to zoom us in slightly more than we are and carry on. It's kind of ignoring these marks um, that are on the tree and just doing my own thing with it. So what I'm going to have is um, my lighter edge on this side. So I'm going to go on first with my CPS. This is a mid-range brown. It's not the darkest one. You learnt something new, Helen. That's the general idea. We like to keep things fresh for you guys. I like to keep things fresh. I'm always doing that in all my colouring. I, I try to in, integrate my flowers into my leaves all the time. So here we go. So I'm starting at my darker edge here. So this would be nice and dark in here around this vine. So I'm just going to push... Um, quite a bit of this sepia colour into here and then I'm going to feather off the edge here now when I say feather off the edge I am basically reducing the pressure on the pencil so when we were talking earlier on about the um, colouring guide I know a lot of you I know Jeanette um, you've said before you struggle to get a light hand and um, there's a few others of you as well that have said that before so when we talk about when I talk about feathering off if this is a pressure scale of pushing really, really hard with your pencil at level 10 and barely touching at all at zero, I'm somewhere around here with the pressure that I'm putting on the pencil at the moment. So another reason to get the big set of pencils because you get these books with it and this stuff is just so helpful. Absolute triumph that they're putting things like this in their, in their pencil packs. It's just brilliant. I think it's a game changer. So let's just feather over the edge there. So nice and gently, we just carry on bringing this sepia colour around. And again, just ease off on the pressure. So I would probably colour this slightly differently if I was using Prismacolor because the colours would blend slightly differently to how they're blending at the moment which is the old um, oil versus wax debate. So let's carry on just around the curves. I'm not going to put quite so much on here. We've got such a small area. It's going to be really quite difficult to blend here. I'm going to put this um, sepia colour all over this little middle bit here. Yeah, definitely, Jeanette. Definitely. They do take layers really, really well really 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 nicely so just carry on around this curve so i've made a note of all these colors in my um my rough work book so that if i don't come back to this picture for another week or so i'm going to be like oh no what colors did i use uh oh so probably we'll finish this picture with you guys we'll see how we go so that's my first layer down just going to moan and say you don't get the little bit with the tin and then you found you do. Do you mean this one? Is this what you're talking about? I wasn't sure if this came with the tins actually, but that's silly because my watercolour was a tin and I got a book with them. Oh dear. Do your research before coming on live, Suzanne. <laughs> right, so on with the redwood now. So this is one of the unique colours just to the gold range. Really, really nice red tint brown. Now what I'm going to do with that is overblend 
the area where I've released the pressure slightly on the pencil and do the same again. So further off, but just nearer to the edge here. Curly says, oh no, no buy, no buy, no buy. No, you must buy. They are on a discount. I'm afraid enabling wise, um, I can find no reason why you guys shouldn't buy these pencils because they are very, very nice and they smell good, which for me is a thing. In fact, let me just put one up here up again so you can give it a sniff. Ready? Any of you go near your phone? <laughs> Hopefully you did. So I'm just going to carry on feathering off around the edge there. Just get sepia out of the way. He's rolling down the table and attacking me. So I'm going to go a little nearer the edge with this one because this is just such a tiny, tiny area under here. You don't get the little paper pads. So that's my mum whinging about not getting the paper pads. I've got about five sets of them here. I'm sure I can give you a spare to add to your ever-increasing collection of stuff. <laughs> What's Helen saying? I feel like I need another tin of pencils, but at least it's not chocolate. Yeah, I wouldn't advise eating these at all. Um, but yeah, mm, love chocolate. Right, I'm just going to overblend under here a little bit more than I have done. Just do any little adjustments at the sort of fabric, she says. Depends if you behave yourself tomorrow. And please let us, are you still going to the hairdressers, by the way? We need to know this. So my mum's in a quandary last night when we were speaking to her about whether to go to the hairdressers or whether to come round here and let me cut a fringe instead because she really doesn't need a haircut. But there's this 1980s where you start the fringe from the back of your head thing that she's convinced I need to take revenge for. I probably wouldn't. You're not still going hairdresser, so I'll do your fringe tomorrow then. Fab. Could just like a moment for like an evil laugh, isn't it? But I'm not going <laughs> to. Right, so I'm going to go on with my darkest brown now. So you can see we're building the layers up, going into the darkest one. So this walnut brown it is available in the Classics range. I'm just going to use this over the top of these lighter browns just to create the shadow at the sides here. So this is the third layer here. Give her a cut. <laughs> I can't cut hair, I can do fringe. Um, I can't do hair though. She'd, she'd look like a pudding basin if I did her hair, it wouldn't end well. Um, but yeah, I can... I can do uh, I can do fringe. I can do a good job of fringe. <laughs> I'm sure it, it so my mum's saying there's lots of witnesses here. I'm I'm sure all my very loyal followers will all say they've heard and seen nothing. That's what I'm hoping. <gasps> so I'm just going ahead and layering that walnut brown into the, the darker areas where we would have some shadows. So I'm just gonna swizzle this round slightly and just carry on around the top here. So I will have to blend some of this out again, which is fine. Just get it layered on. There we go. <laughs> Helen's laughing, Christy is kind of laughing. I know. I did cut a fringe a couple of times actually when we were in that first lockdown in 2020 and I did a really good job. Fringe is called bangs in the US. I know, I don't understand why they're called bangs. Can you explain that to me? Because they don't bang when you walk or anything. <laughs> Honestly, the things we talk about when I'm colouring live. Hairdressers, chocolates. I don't know. Keeps it interesting. There we go. So I'm just going to blend out slightly. So I'm going to go back to my mid-range brown, which was this sepia colour. So just a step up from the walnut brown, just to slightly hide that transition between the walnut brown and the rest of the branch. It's going really light pressure going on here. Just enough to blend things out a little bit. And then I'm going to use that really nice um, neutral colour, this almond, which Again, is a new colour that's just within this gold range. And against the edge here where we would have our highlight, I'm going to block colour and then just blend that into the redwood layer. So kind of blend in from the dark to the middle and then the light to the middle. 
fringe sounds better. I know it's bizarre, isn't it? Bangs and fringe. I don't know. There must be a reason. I'm sure Google would know if I asked him. So I'm just going to carry on doing that all of the way around. And under here as well. So we've had sort of three or four layers here. Nothing's gone sort of muddy looking. They're all blending together really, really nicely. And then I'm going to introduce a little bit of this sap green. So I've gone for this colour because it's quite an earthy green. Um, so when I'm choosing my colours, the colours that I'm using are um, on the, the warmer side. They don't have any yellow bases in them though, so I wouldn't go ahead and blend a green like this into the side of the tree trunk. It just wouldn't look right. So what I've looked for is an earthy coloured green that's got a little bit of a, a sort of browny, bluey tone to it, which would be these ones down here and possibly these ones. So I've gone for this sap green just to give the edge of the trunk a little bit of a different colour. And this will sit really, really nicely, um, as it did with those leaves where the flower is, over the top of the almond layer and just let you integrate that into the brown without everything going all muddy together. When you were younger, your mum used to call fringe print. How bizarre. Never heard it called that before, Christia. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm just going to go ahead and add this into this light edge here, just over the top of that almond layer. I've left a couple of little bits under here to just to squeeze this into. Of course, things like this kind of blending becomes trickier the smaller the branches get, so you have sort of less room to mess about with it, really. <laughs> just laughing at what my mum's put there. <laughs> Well, I won't do that to you tomorrow. I wouldn't be that cruel. <laughs> That's funny. So I'm just getting my head out of the uh, the glare of the light here just to re-blend over anywhere. This is such a good lamp, but it, it's really glary to, uh, to see. And then all I'm going to do is take that lovely redwood colour again, which was the lightest of the browns that I was using, and then just gently overlay just to fill in any gaps when it, where it's needed. So that's all blended together really, really nicely. So what I'll do is I'll use that um, all the way down the rest of the tree as well. And then that obviously then with the green, it leads us into doing different things with this area of the trunk with greens and stuff like that in. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an idea of actually using them, um, you know, on a page. I will just show you quickly how they react with um, blending pens and pencils. In fact, let me just grab a quick drink, one second. Oh, that's better. <coughs> I'm just wondering, I can't remember if I've still got my test pages back here or if I've ripped them out. No, I've ripped them out. Let's have a little go with... I've got a scrap pad or let's have a little go at this Bristol board, which is one of the uh, pads that you get with the, the big set here. So... Just using this one basically because the paper weights that bit better. So let's have a little look at how they react with different blenders and things. So let's use not that one, let's use the cherry, which is a new one, and this other softer one. So I'm going to go ahead and lay a little bit of these down together. In fact, I'll use the same colours as I used on that flower so that we can see how how well or badly it sort of smooths everything out. So I'll go on with this Bengal Rose Deep first. Just stop that wobbling around all over the place. So if we do... So 
this is sort of a medium to firm pressure that I'm putting on with this at the moment. And then I'm just going to taper that off so that I can blend that lighter colour into it. So I'm just going to do a couple of, how many different bits and bobbies have I got here? I've got one, two, I think I've got three different things here that we can try. So you can see how much um, these give you these little bits and bobs, which is exactly how Prismacolor is. You colour with it and you get these little bits and bobs absolutely everywhere. It's just because they're super, super soft to use. There we go. Just to darken the ends up a little bit more than they are. And then I'll use this pink bloom again. So let's just smooth, smooth that over with the lighter coloured pencil. And we'll just see how they react to the different blenders that we've got as well. Then a little bit of this um, cherry colour. So just start it a little bit back and then just smush it into this one. Just so that we've got a little bit of darker contrast there. So you can see, look, all of this um, this pencil dust, this is very, very similar to how Prismacolor are when you use them, which is why I've always got a makeup brush standing by, just to get rid of everything, because those bits will sm uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Smudge if you put your hand through it. So I've got a couple of different blenders. I've actually got a, a brand new one that just arrived yesterday, um, which I will try. I'm sure my Prismacolor blender's in here somewhere. Yeah, it is. So I've got a couple of different ones. I've got my Prismacolor blender, which is just a colourless blender pencil, um, which is, is wax-based. I've actually got a Blix um, Studio one, which mum bought me back from New York. So I've only used it a couple of times because obviously I'm not near New York to replace it. I've also got this um, Finesse coloured pencil blender pen, which has two different tips. It has um, like a long pointy brush tip and it has um, a little end sort of fine tip for sort of detailing work as well. So you do have to clean this one in between uses because it will keep, keep the colour. So we'll go for the um, Prismacolor one first of all and just see how it reacts to being smoothed over with these. So that's quite nice. So what these colourless blenders will do is they just smush the pigment together, get it really into the tooth of the paper and make it look nice and smooth. And you can use these as well with um, just with an, a, you know, one colour of a pencil. You know, so if you're doing like a, a flower or something and you want it to have quite a subtle edge to it, say if that's the petal that you're doing, for example, you can use something like this just to smooth over the edges and what it will do is it will drag the pigment further into the white area and create like a blended end as well so you can do a lot of one pencil color things with a blender pencil that it would take you sort of two colors to get that effect whereas you can achieve it just with one of these but always remember to clean the tip of your blender pencil because you don't do it on the page that you're coloring on this this is just going to go in the recycling bin when i've finished but just clean it because obviously if you then go to use this on something else you're going to drag pink into whatever color that you're using so this is the blix one So that's much of a muchness really. Don't feel much difference between this and the Prismacolor one. It's doing exactly the same thing, just smoothing everything over. And again, I'm just going to clean the tip of that one before we use it for next time. And then this blender pen. So you get these in a pack of three quite solventy actually um, the the smell of them so I'm going to work from 
the darkest end into the lightest end here. So this pen is quite wet, so I don't know how this would sit in my Johanna book, so I would have to test this on a test palette. But that does smooth the pigment over really nicely as well, and again, we just clean the tip of this on a piece of paper, spare piece of paper before we use it next time. So they all blend in a pretty even way, really. I don't see an awful lot of difference between those three. Um, that's maybe a touch smoother, but it does show a lot of the pencil marks. I mean, to be honest, I wasn't really taking my time with it, but they're all much of a muchness, so you can blend with them as well. All in all, I have to say, really, really nice product. Um, I don't see any downsides to these at all. I do like the extra bits that you get with it. Um, I do wish that they had put the colour chart in a sensible order like the leaflet is instead of like that, which is very peculiar, but you know, fair enough, each to their own and all that. So yeah, all in all, a very, very, very nice product. And that blue there really is bothering me. I'm probably gonna have to move that. Just, I just can't not. <laughs> but a really, really nice product. And um, depending on what you want in to pay, whether you go for the tin or the pencil case, the pencils will be exactly the same. I prefer the pencil case because it saves me having to buy another one, um, but that's just me. But they are really, really nice. So sorry to those of you that instantly feel the need to go and buy them. <laughs> they are really, really nice pencils. So I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys. I am going to upload this onto my YouTube channel now anyway, so it will be the right way round if you want to view it again. Um, any discount codes and other details will be in the description below once everything is uploaded. And thank you for joining me this evening. I'm going to go and set myself back up on the other side of the room with Catherine and I'm going to carry on with my chameleon. Which is coming on in leaps and bounds. Which I'll find for you real quick and show you. Hey. Because I think he's, I'm not sure where the page is. I think it's towards the beginning. Yeah, here we go. Sorry for the glare, it's my protective film. <laughs> so there we go, he's coming on nicely. So I'm going to work on some more of these um, leaves and everything before Sunday. And um, I'll put a picture up so you guys can carry on. I may do some of the finishing bits live on camera with you, but it's the same palettes. Um, I'm going to carry on with this for a little while tonight, I think. But yeah, I'll see the rest of you on Sunday in the Johanna Basford Your Pages group. So thanks for your company. Take care. Those of you that feel compelled to purchase this, sorry not sorry. Um, don't forget you've got the discount code that you guys can use, 30% off. It's Suzanne30, available in the UK, the USA and Germany at the moment, direct on Castle's website. Thank you for your company. I'll just take you out of my phone stand and it's bye from me. Take care, everyone. <laughs>